My name is George Hornberger. I'm a professor here in environmental engineering. I'm also the director of the Vanderbilt Institute for Energy and Environment. That's VIEE. VIEE is an interdisciplinary institute. Uh, we have a broad representation. We have professors from um, a whole variety of schools, the engineering school, arts and science, uh, the Peabody School. Uh, we have participation from our business school and law school as well. We engage in a whole variety of interdis interdisciplinary projects where we look at both social science aspects, legal aspects, as well as the engineering and scientific aspects associated with energy and the environment. Uh, and we include in our analyses uh, impacts of climate change and adaptation uh, to climate change because climate change is being driven in large part by uh, energy applications. We also consider the impacts of uh, creation of energy on the environment through various waste streams. I'd like to tell you about a project that we have going in the Richland Creek watershed in Nashville, in the Nashville vicinity, where we're looking at the impact of fertilizer application to lawns on the environment. It is a project that involves not only uh, environmental engineering work, but also work uh, by professors in the uh, Human and Organizational Development in the Peabody School, and also a professor in the law school, Mike Vandenberg. Uh, Jim Fraser is the professor in HOD. Uh, the, the people, the, some of the people are uh, engaged in social science research that ties in with the physical science research. The uh, social science research, we are involved in interviewing property owners and property renters in the Richland Creek watershed to learn how they apply fertilizer and what their concerns are uh, about fertilizer application. The physical science side, I have a PhD student who is making measurements of the gaseous releases from uh, suburban and urban lawns. Uh, that is, when fertilizers are applied, some of the fertilizer is not used by the plants, by the lawns in this case, uh, but the bacteria degrade it and uh, partially, uh, only carry it partially, the nitrogen fertilizer, to uh, dinitrogen, which is a major component in the atmosphere, but some of it is released as nitrous oxide. And nitrous oxide is a very powerful greenhouse gas. It's 300 times more powerful than carbon dioxide. And we're interested, therefore, in linking the social science research, what controls people's behaviors, why they uh, apply fertilizer, what their concerns are, uh, with the ultimate objective of learning how we can inform the populace to minimize environmental impacts. Uh, as part of that research, we also have uh, worked with the uh, School for Science Outreach here at Vanderbilt, and we have high school students who are measuring uh, soil nitrate in soil water. Uh, we're here in the environmental engineering labs. Uh, the machine here next to me is a gas chromatograph. This is an instrument that we're using on the lawn project to measure nitrous oxide emissions. Basically, my PhD student has constructed a collar uh, that goes into the lawn. Uh, we put a cover over it and then uh, collect the gas. The gas coming from the soil uh, collects in this dome. And we take a sample out of a port into a, a syringe. The syringe then, uh, the gas is injected into an ampule, and these then are brought back to the lab and put into this machine, and the gas chromatograph then samples the gas inside, and through the use of standards, we get an accurate measurement of the nitrous oxide con concentration in the air that's collected in this, uh, in this chamber. And because we do this over time, we can measure the rate at which nitrous oxide is being emitted from lawns. And we do this on a series of different lawns. So 
that we will sample lawns for which um, we have very large or fairly large amounts of fertilizer application, all the way to lawns that are simply left uh, fallow, if you will, that are not, uh, we don't have fertilizer application uh, of, it, of any serious kind at all. We have international projects as well. I have a project in Sri Lanka, again involving social scientists as well as physical scientists, and we are looking at the uh, impacts, potential impacts of uh, climate change on drought and adaptation to uh, drought conditions in Sri Lanka. The, again, the idea is to look at both the physical science side, but also how people can adapt to climate changes. Uh, so we uh, are doing work in the field in Sri Lanka, and uh, one of the PhD students is also doing computer modeling work related to that project.